If you are considering customer loyalty and are looking to adopt a program, you will first need to address the question of who your customers really are. And the answer is not always obvious. Once you do answer that question, the next one will be which are the most important. And even if the first question is obvious, the second is always more challenging. The reason you need to ask these questions is if you are devising a loyalty program to keep customers longer or encourage them to spend more, then you need to know which ones you should target as the chances are that you don't necessarily want or will not be able to afford to target them all. Consider a restaurant chain. The wait staff may recognize frequent customers by sight, but would they ever know their names? Or where they live, how to contact them, or why they frequent that restaurant? Think about a business that thrives primarily upon referrals. Take a general contractor, for example. He might know exactly who his prior customers have been for the past five years. But how many are likely to need another big construction project on their home anytime soon? Perhaps none. And what if the contractor's business comes in almost exclusively from referrals from architects or realtors? Rewarding the actual customers for loyalty in this situation is of little value unless they need another construction project on their home. In this case, the loyalty contractor needs to reward is that of his referral sources, for they are his real customers from a loyalty perspective. Once the real customers are identified, the next task is that of determining which customers you wish to build loyalty with. While some businesses may not need or be able to distinguish among customers, others may have the challenge of deciding where the money for customer loyalty incentives should be spent, as to create the greatest return on that investment. One question, for example, is whether you want to reward the customers who spend the most of your company's products or services. That's tempting and may help keep these customers, but won't likely derive more business from them. It turns out to be more effective to focus on those who don't spend as much to encourage them to spend more. A car dealer, for example, may find its customer loyalty incentives more effective at getting loyal customers who purchase lower priced cars to trade up, whereas those who already purchase the most expensive models cannot be enticed to spend any more than they already do. In fact, my local Acura dealer is doing exactly that offering me an incentive on a new car as a loyal Acura customer, but only on the model that represents an upgrade to my current one. Loyal customers who already own the more expensive models do not receive this promotion. As with marketing to acquire new customers, it is a challenge for companies to spend their dollars as effectively as possible in loyalty programs. That means putting the money where it will reap the most expected benefit to the company, and that in turn means determining which customers and what incentives will be the right combination for success.